Okay, right. So we're we're just about live on Facebook, and as soon as we're live on Facebook, then uh, I'll start running through the schedule. And um, if uh, let me just check. So Phil Phil's joined us as well. So we've got Phil here. So we've got all our panelists uh, minus uh, John from Blue Water, but he'll dial in um, as soon as he gets the chance. So uh, yeah. So. I will, I'll make a start. So thank you to everyone who's who's joined us today. Obviously, all crew who've dialed in. It's great to see so many of you who've been able to join the webinar. I know a lot of uh, crew were obviously very busy during the summer months, um, but it's really nice. Um, obviously, if you're not working at the moment, if you've, you've got the chance to, to join us, or hopefully you finished your ship for the day and you're able to join us. So that's, you know, that's great. And obviously, thank you so much to all the, the training providers who, who've been able to join us as well. Um, I think it's a really nice time to get together before um, everyone gets into the winter season um, so we can start um, the, you know, start thinking about training uh, for the winter season ahead. Um, and I know a lot of, um, I, I know a lot of uh, all the training providers have uh, um, schedules for the winter. So it'll be great to hear from all of you. Um, I think, Anna, I think it sounds like, uh, I don't know, I think the, 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 the video is on you. I think there might be some background noise, but I can see that you are muted. So I'm not too sure why we're focused on you, but uh, I'll try. I'll try and change that as we go along. Um, that's very weird. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so um, just to run everyone through the schedule for today. So um, the first uh, uh, training college that we've got uh, giving us an update is the Warsash Maritime School. So Adrian Crawford, Crawford from Warsash will be giving us an update. Uh, then after Adrian, we'll have Anna Percival Harris from JPMA. Uh, after Anna, hopefully uh, John Wyborn from Blue Water would have dialed in um, to give us an update on their training. Um, uh, after Blue Water, we'll have uh, Philip Godwin from Ocean Pro. Um, after Philip, uh, we'll have uh, Kim Woody from KDW Training. And uh, after Kim, we will have Georgie Maney from Luxury Hospitality. And last but not least, uh, we will have Joey Mean from IAMI Guest as well to give us a little bit of an update uh, and what, uh, about what they're up to. Um, and then finally, um, for everyone who's dialed in, if you've got any questions for any of the panelists, feel free to pop your question in the chat as they're talking. I'm sure if they've got a second, they can quickly answer your question. If not, we will run through all the questions at the end of the webinar uh, and uh, you feel free um, if you're thinking about something to pop it in at, towards the end and we can run through all those questions. Brilliant, so um, what I'll do is, um, I'll start with uh, you, Adrian. Um, just, could you tell us a little bit more about um, what, um, what training you guys are offering right now at the moment? Um, obviously you're based within the UK there are a lot of COVID restrictions that are coming into place as we go into winter. So it'd be good to hear what training you're offering right now, if there are any COVID restrictions that crew need to be aware of that affect your training. Um, obviously, it'd be great to know what's online because that's really convenient for everyone right now. And also just what you have planned uh, for the, the winter season ahead. Thanks very much. Uh, just checking, first of all, everyone can hear me. So that's a thumbs up by the looks of it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> first sound check is the obvious bit um too much to cover in five minutes so we'll um we'll blast through um just for those of you who don't know me my name's adrian crawford i'm the um, commercial and business contact for the warsash maritime school and warsash super yacht academy um i'll leave my details on the screen later so if anyone's got any questions outside of the session feel free to um just drop me a note i'm going to attempt a bit of a screen share now so let me know if this goes horribly wrong uh, let's see. Oh no, that's not going to work because I've been disabled. <laughs> Could you allow me some screen sharing? Yeah, no worries. I'm going to do that right now. So I'll, I'll, I'll have another go. Stop the clock, by the way. That's fine. So uh, let me know if you can share right now. Try again. Yeah. Go. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So hopefully everyone can see. Um, just a few slides. It's probably easier that I uh, let the slides do the talking than me because the slides will actually tell you more. Um, so obviously that's our details on the front screen. Um, in terms of what we're currently offering um, and where, so everything's available at the moment, which is pretty incredible considering the situation. Um, we're offering a full spread and cohort of activity, um, all the SDCW activities running, um, all of the courses are 
um, either online or blended. Um, obviously, some of them have to be face to face, so we, we are still conducting face to face where we need to. But generally, everything is running um, within reason. Um, there's there's a couple of minor caveats to that statement. Um, the programs I would say are now more flexible than ever. So we've attempted to put in dedicated support. The provisions the same. There's a lot more online learning now. There's a lot more blended learning. I'm sure you're going to hear a lot of this from my colleagues as well. But yeah, you know, the re the reality is we've adapted the offering to become more flexible to yacht crew and the situation that everyone is in at the moment. So it's all about COVID best practice in place where we need it. And if not, we've adapted into an online and a blended environment to make sure that we continue to deliver, you know, to the high quality that we've been delivering um, throughout history in effect. Uh, location wise, still open in Southampton, Warsash, Timsbury, et cetera, et cetera, obviously online. Um, in terms of what we've got coming up for the winter season, everything at the moment. So there's everything is up for grabs, everything is available. Um, again, you know, that's a big statement because we, we do sort of 120 plus courses. So please reach out if there's anything specific you've got any questions on, it's, it's busy. Um, we've got some late availability which shows up on the website. It's always really useful if you've got any specific courses that you'd like to look into and, and have a look online. The online piece has, has gone really well. Um, just a quick example. Uh, Officer of the Watch Unlimited at the moment, HNC Nauticals, it says we've reconfigured this um, based on feedback from Yacht Crew. Um, we've still got some spaces for October. The, the big difference here is it's five months um, online study, which, which is amazing. So you actually do the last six weeks on campus, but you do the first five months online, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, the training is, if anyone's interested, is actually eligible for a student loan. Um, that covers academic fees as well. Um, and then this course will be topped up later on to full HND, full degree. So it's an amazing program. And I, I think, you know, great sort of steps made by the individuals within uh, Warsash CPR Academy to make this one live. So we're really proud of that one. Any, any further questions, let myself, Lars, um, the admissions teams know. I'll leave, I'll leave you some details. Um, you, you've got it on the call anyway. Um, small Vessel Engineering is another one where online is really, is really, I think, you know, taking it to the next level. We've obviously got um, all the programmes are operational. All the workshops are operational and COVID secure if they're needed, um, but we're, you know, in effect, we're trying to put as many of those modules now online, um, all blend them into campus. But we're, we're pretty much reconfiguring, as we said earlier, so we, we're trying to push it beyond that. But, you know, there will be some exceptions, and it's a big statement for me to say it's all online, but just please reach out, let us know. The, the drive is to get everything online and to very much blend and make it as user-friendly as possible. Um, so yeah, I mean, the bottom statement says it all is extensive resources available. We have a, a strong university learning platform that we use as well. So it's, it's a nice experience. It's not, it's not difficult to work with. It's very easy. It's very friendly and, and it delivers results. So we're really pleased to be working that way um, moving forward. Um, in terms of COVID regulations, I mean, look, I, we, we've got COVID regulations in place. We have regulations. We've also got UK Gov regulations. We've got university regulations, I've got specific regulations for specific courses, but to be honest, it depends on what course or what area you're looking at doing and, and when you're looking at coming in, et cetera, et cetera. So the best thing I can offer at the moment is some feedback um, from some people just been through, just saying, you know, it, it's, it's amazing. Um, you know, we've got the mix right in terms of the precautions um, and the way, you know, some really lovely examples of where we're, we're working with people probably closer than ever now in terms of their learning experience and actually delivering better results. So um, we're, we're, we're delighted with how it's going and we're, we're putting a positive face on it. So at the end of the day, the, these are the things that, yeah, we're working with, but we're getting around. So we're working collectively to make these things happen. Um, so in summary, everything's open. Sorry, that's a dreadful slide, by the way, blame Lars for that one. Um, we're COVID safe. Uh, again, hopefully you can see some masks and bits going on. And yeah, the summary is, as I've described, everything's available, uh, flexible programs, extensive resources available to support you. Um, for me personally, bottom point's the most important one, which is we're here to help. Um, you, you just tell us what you need and how we can help you. And I'm sure that will echo with my colleagues later on as well. So thanks for the opportunity. Um, do just reach out to us if there's anything. Brilliant. Thank you so much, uh, Adrian. I think, uh, yeah, that presentation was uh, was great and obviously uh, really nice uh, to have a look at all the courses that you, you you have available. So it's nice that, you know, most of your courses are running, which is great. Um, would, would you be able to pop your contact details in the chat if anyone's looking to contact you directly about um, any of those courses? 
Brilliant. Okay, so I will move on very swiftly to Anna Percival Harris from JPMA. Um, Anna, I know when you first joined the webinar, uh, you did mention that obviously you're based near Liverpool, there's a lot of restrictions going on, but could you tell us a little bit more about the courses that you guys are currently running um, and that you've got planned for the winter and if any of your courses have been affected by the, the COVID restrictions at the moment? Okay, thanks. Um, for those of you who don't know me, uh, I'm Anna, I'm the Managing Director of John Percival Marine Associates and yeah, we're based in Hoylake, which is on the Wirral across the Mersey from Liverpool. So yeah, the UK has a three tier system at the moment and we are in tier three, which is the highest level. Um, it's mainly about socialising though, so people can't mix in pubs and restaurants, stuff like that. So training isn't actually affected um, in any way. The only um, the only way our students are affected is they can't actually all go out together for a meal uh, or to the pub afterwards, which is, isn't actually a bad thing, to be honest, um, keeping them out of the pub. Um, so the courses that we have going at the moment, um, classroom based courses in the UK, we're running all of our engineering modules. Um, so the SV second and Y4 modules, the Y3, the chief um, small vessel and Y2. Um, we were running them online during the summer and um, they're now full five day courses with the exams. We're also doing a lot of um, extra exams for people who for, for one reason or another didn't pass first time um, before lockdown and have kind of been treading water. So we're doing a lot of um, research, but not just our students, but it's a fair share of uh, other, other people's students who, who haven't passed. Um, we're running our helm operational helm, helm management uh, courses in the classroom. Um, we also, not particularly yacht uh, relevant, but we're also running the work for operations. There are quite a few yachties who are looking to move into work boats in the UK. So we're running that in the classroom as well. Um, all of our oral prep is being run online. Uh, the MCA is still holding the oral exams online. So we've kept our oral prep online, which means you can do your oral prep and your oral exam from the yacht um, or from whatever country you're based in, which has actually worked really well for a lot of people. And this is something that we're hoping the MCA keep uh, open as an option because uh, it, it, it prevents people having to travel about um, and people are doing it in, in their, um, their downtime. If people are on the other side of the Atlantic, they're doing it in the evenings and they're still um, working during the day. Um, we're not running any deck modules or RYA courses at the moment, and that's just due to a lack of deck instructors. We have some isolating and there are some of our um, deck and RYA courses that can't actually really be done online. We're not running the AEC one um, because uh, social distancing rules, we can't actually use the room. We do our AEC where our engine is, it's too small. Um, and also our first aid courses, we're not doing those for, for social distancing reasons. Um, the upcoming courses, all the same that I've just mentioned, um, we've published our schedule through to Easter next year. We're in the process of applying to the MCA for accreditation to run AEC 2. So hopefully by um, 2021 we'll be running that and that is one that we can run because we don't need the engine room for. Um, how COVID has affected us, we've only got three out of our nine classrooms in use, um, keeping the numbers of people in, in the building to a minimum. Um, but because the oral prep is all online, we're actually not running that many less courses than we were pre-COVID because we've got about half of our courses are, are happening um, online. Um, some of our staff are working from home, so we do have a small admin team in the building to look after the students who are here in the building. Um, we've had to reduce some of the numbers that we take on various courses. We're, we're in a Victorian building, so we're constrained um by the the room sizes basically some rooms just can't be used um because you can't actually sit two meters apart from more than one person um the weather has changed in the uk so uh, we can't have the windows open anymore so we bought air purifiers so um all the the air changes uh, are happening regularly the engineers will appreciate that we've got a good a good regular air change um we've got a one-way system in place uh two meter social distancing it's all working well um, with regards to travel, I think somebody mentioned travel earlier on in the chat. Um, I was going to mention that anyway. The uh, Chamber of Shipping and Nautilus uh, produced um, a lovely letter uh, which seafarers can use to travel into the UK. The UK um, gave seafarers key worker status at the beginning of our lockdown. 
um, and therefore they are not required to self-isolate when they arrive from the countries that we don't have travel corridors with. Um, officially it's only for UK seafarers but it doesn't say that on the letter and the border force agents don't seem to be saying anything about it but it means that yacht crew who are traveling into the UK can come without having to isolate. Some are, we are getting students who are coming two weeks early to isolate which we do appreciate but because we've got all the social distancing in place and all the, the appropriate measures in place, we're confident that um, everything's been done safely. Um, and if any of our current students are watching, we'd like to say thank you because everyone has been abiding by um, all of the measures we've put in place um, and everything does seem to be working well. So there you go. Yes. Thank you so much, Anna. And actually, I was actually gonna pick up on what you've just said there about travel to the UK, because I did see uh, a bit of a discussion on one of the yacht Facebook groups, someone wanting to do a helm course, but uh, was desperate to find one online because they weren't convinced that they could travel. And I, and I do want to emphasize um, that I've just gone to the UK government website and double checked what you were saying because I wanted to mention it right after you. But yeah, you can definitely travel to the UK without the need to self isolate. So without the quarantine, if you have all your seafarer documents, obviously, I would definitely check the website to make sure that you qualify. And even if you can double check with a, a yacht agent who specializes in travel, just to double check. But I think, as um, Anna said, I think that's a great opportunity if you're worried that travel is going to hinder your ability to travel to the UK to take up one of these courses. Um, you should be fine if you've got all your seafarer documentation as you are exempt. Brilliant. Um, and, and I don't know if you want to pop your any contact details in the chat for anyone who wants to get hold of you. Um, yeah, uh, okay. just um, I know that. Adrian's done it, so it might be useful. Um, okay, so I don't think we've got J John that has joined us. I'm just, oh, John has joined us. There we go. I can see he's standing out somewhere very windy. So, uh, John, I will hand over to you. Hopefully uh, we can hear you okay. Oh, you're just on mute. I think uh, John's dialing in from his mobile, so he's just having a, a bit of a, a struggle there to unmute, but we'll wait for him for a second. I found it. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you very clearly, actually. Not too bad. Oh, good. Yeah, so, sorry to be late. Um, I've, I had to find somewhere where there was a decent 4G signal. I'm, I'm in the UK at the moment visiting my old mum. Oh. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, just to up update you about what Blue Water have been up to, uh, it, I have to say it's been it's been a a fairly stressful, hectic training season so far. Um, we've had a, a lot of cancellations of, of students, uh, but the demand because there's been no training sort of down here since since March is such that all of our courses have still run uh, at full capacity uh, because there's been um, a lot of people waiting to take their places. So actually, students haven't been the problem with us. Um, uh, with the COVID travel, the problem's been uh, instructors uh, because uh, some of my uh, some of my trainers are are quite worried. They've got underlying conditions. They're quite worried about exposing themselves to the to the to the virus, which you know I absolutely don't blame them at all. Um, so uh, are reluctant to travel down to France. But luckily for us, um, there's quite a few that have agreed to come down to us for an extended period. So. I've got uh, I've got about four who've come down uh, for the best part of the winter. Um, well, for the, certainly between now and Christmas, uh, which is excellent. So that's actually enabled us to to uh, to, to meet the uh, to meet the demand. And we have now run um, we're running a nav and radar course in in Zoom um, this week, which was because uh, the instructor didn't feel able to to come down to us um, and I think that is going to be the theme going forward I think there's going to be more and more um, uh, zoom classes online classes um, and it's actually working um, a lot better than I thought it would uh, if I'm honest it's um, um, it, it's it, it's it's actually it's actually okay for some some courses talking about um, you, you mentioned um, helm earlier Stacy I, I actually I believe there is one place where you can do Helm online uh, and that's hopefully a, a short-term COVID measure because th that's one course I really think needs to be done um, in because in, it's it's all about 
it's all about interpersonal reactions. You, you need to get a team dynamic and it's very hard to achieve that in a Zoom room. But um, nevertheless, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been going fine. It's, it's been hectic. It's been stressful, but we've, we've achieved most of our courses. I think there's only one this side of Christmas that we've had to cancel because we really couldn't think of a way of getting a, getting an instructor uh, to us. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's good. Um, and online is the future. We're, we're getting, a, a, can you still hear me? Yes. Sorry. Yeah, we're getting a, a, a new range of online courses, PDSD um, online, uh, which is, uh, will be a, uh, an autonomous interactive course that's with the MCA now we're just awaiting approval for that uh, and we'll have uh, PSA hopefully as well so I would expect those to be available from January and we'll be launching quite a few other not whole online courses but we're going to provide materials for students to use um, to help them um, whether we're doing the class whether we're doing the class in the zoom room or whether we're doing it in the classroom, uh, we're developing online tools to actually help people learn. Because one of the problems, as I'm, I'm sure most of my colleagues doing the MCA courses would agree, is, is that these courses are really highly charged. It's, it's, it really, some courses are really crammed into the amount of time that we have. So we're trying to find ways to, to actually spread the learning out and, and to make it easier for people to, to learn what they need to learn. This is really especially true for engineering. So that's our that's our objective over the next twelve months is to is to get more um, interactive online learning tools available on our on our learning management system. Uh, so yeah, stressful, but uh, it's good uh, both in Fort Lauderdale, in Palmer, and in and in Antibes, where we're at the moment pretty much running at full capacity. Brilliant! Wow. Brilliant. That, I mean, that sounds uh, great, John. And uh, I think it's really nice to hear. And I'm sure so many crew will be really happy to hear that, you know, courses are obviously lend themselves to online learning and are really suited for online learning. You guys are sort of pushing in that direction because obviously with crew being uh, based all over the world, that's that's so convenient for them. So that's great. And as you say, I think obviously there are definitely certain courses where, you know, being in a face to face environment are are really important. So I think we, we don't want to underplay that. But at the same time, it is nice that uh, there are so many courses going online so uh, yeah gr great to hear that brilliant and john can i share your or any what contact details can i share for crew who'd like to get in touch with questions about courses um if they contact training at bluewateryachting.com um okay. or go on to the website bluewateryachting.com uh, there are there are links there to uh all of the courses you can book directly on you can book and pay directly online or um uh, one of the uh one, one of the uh, ladies in the uh, training office in, in any of our three centers will be, will be uh, pleased to help you. Brilliant, thank you so much, John, that's uh, brilliant. Um, I will move uh, swiftly on to our next panelist. Uh, so we've got Philip Godwin from Ocean Pro. Uh, Ocean Pro, you guys are based down here on the, the French Riviera, is that right? Yeah, that's right. We're based in beaulieu sur mer in uh, just between Nice and Monaco, so quite in the heart of the yachting community down here. And uh, yeah, we've been doing all right really this year. It was a bit of a worrying time, obviously, on the, uh, in the spring, but since then it's been reasonably busy. We've managed to get out on the water and do our training as pretty much as normal. COVID restrictions applying, of course. But uh, yeah, we, we have uh, delved a little bit into Zoom with um, particularly during the lockdown with uh, some pre-study for Yacht Master Theory courses and that sort of thing. Um, one of the things we've uh, had quite a bit of uh, interest in is the, the the tender operator course and the uh, advanced course, and that's it is slowly, slowly getting through that really that people that are using um, tenders as operating at night do need a little bit of extra training because uh, you know there have been incidents over the years with that have resulted in uh, accidents and fatalities. So you know it's it's something that does need looking at, I think, and hopefully it's going to you know, come more to the forefront over the next, uh, you know, not, not that it's um, something that uh, isn't being addressed already, but I think it does need a little bit more um, training towards, you know, crew using tenders at night. One of the other things we've done quite a lot of is um, PwC instructor course. And one of the nice things we found out recently is the French authorities have actually said that they do uh, recognize someone who hasn't uh, got a license actually being supervised by a professional crew um, actually they've actually said professional captain which seems a bit strange but a specifically trained crew can actually supervise a guest 
and they're happy with that. So that's actually nice to see that in black and white. And apart from that, we're doing a quite a bit of our yacht master program as as per as normal over the winter season, and that seems to be you know continually uh, popular. And also, you know, building up to you know thinking about um, the yacht master side of it, the uh, online courses that people can do to actually prepare for that, things like essential navigation and day skipper theory online, that's been quite popular as well. As far as um, COVID and stuff like that, I think, yeah, we, we're trying to carry on and, you know, not let that hinder us too much, obviously taking the right precautions, but, you know, practical courses do tend to, you know, find people in close proximity. So sometimes we do have to ask people to wear masks if it, they are gonna be in uh, close proximity to each other. But apart from that, yeah, we're, we're hoping that the, the, the winter season will be carry on being fruitful and um, like to see lots of crew coming on to see us. Great. And Phil, I don't know if I could just put you on the spot and ask you, I know you were, we, we, we discussed uh, a month or so ago about, um, obviously there was the, the update from the French authorities with regards to non-EU qualifications. Uh, yeah. So non-EU crew using non-EU qualifications in France specifically. Uh, there was an update from the, the Prefet Maritime in, the, in, in France. Um, and I think there, there was probably a bit of confusion at the time. We obviously reported initially that uh, that would make um, courses that were granted by UK training providers like Power Boat Level 2 invalidated. But I know you attended the meeting with the Prefet Maritime. Uh, I don't know if you could maybe just give everyone a quick, uh, just an overview, because I know you were at the meeting. So it's, it's nice to hear from someone who's sure, actually yeah. there. Yeah, that was um, really what the uh, Brexit brought up a bit of a problem in that um, it doesn't really affect the yachting industry too much. The, uh, the, the ruling was that a non-EU citizen, um, well, the problem came up with, with a French registered boat to begin with. Yes. So if, if, a, if the vessel was French registered and the person was from outside the EU and they were using a certificate that wasn't from their home country, then that wouldn't be allowed. So. Generally, really, that I mean, it's just, it was fine all the time the UK was within the EU. But obviously, as Brexit's happened now, then the, um, the person from outside the EU, for instance, somebody from Brazil, for example, holding a RWA level two, it's not their home country. They're using a French registered boat, not allowed. At the moment, we're trying to, you know, work with the uh, UK Maritime to to sort of get some sort of exemption from that because of. You know, the, all the RWA qualifications are so widely used by all sorts of nationalities of, of people that it's going to cause a huge problem if people can't, um, well, not so much for the yachting industry, as I'm trying to stress, because mainly uh, there's not that many uh, French registered um, yachts anyway at the at present time. Um, so hopefully they are, it's going to be addressed, but it's more for the sort of pleasure side of it where uh, someone who wanted to rent a boat, for example, and was from outside the EU, wouldn't be able to use an RWA qualification or any other qualification that wasn't from their home country. I'm not sure that's perfectly clear, but it is yeah, a bit no, of a... I think that's, you know, it's definitely clarified. I think that the main uh, point there was that, you know, I think the, the initial impact of that um, is obviously a, a lot more minimised because it is really, um, um, it's only set to French registered boats. So, um, yeah, and I mean, great to, to hear that you've obviously been involved with that and you are um, looking to get an exemption. So uh, thank you so much. And obviously, it would be great to hear from you um, if you do receive an update on that. Yes, absolutely. Stacey, can I come in there? Yes. <laughs> yeah, my, my, I think I have to take some of the blame for the confusion that happened <laughs> uh, about that. But, uh, because I, I actually asked a question. Is there a problem with people operating uh, tenders on, for example, British registered boats who are New Zealand or South Africans, etc., um, and that got transformed into there is a problem um, where, by uh, a, a, a French uh, a, a, a French colleague, um, and that's essentially how it became uh, how, how how it became a rumor. Uh, I was simply asking the question. Potentially, it could be, but I actually don't think there is a problem, and I don't think there will be a problem. Um, and if that changes, obviously, we'll 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 let you know uh, straight away. 
definitely no i think it's really good to clarify that because i know obviously it's a, it it would have affected a lot of crew so in the, in the industry so it's really nice that that's uh, been clarified Stacey, there is another issue that might affect crew, which is a real issue, um, and that is uh, for UK nationals after Brexit. Uh, we don't know yet uh, what their visa status is going to have to be after, after December the uh, 31st. I'm hoping uh, that we'll be able to continue as we are, but it's not impossible that UK nationals like the South Africans and the, the, the Kiwis and the, the Australians may have to get a Schengen visa. I'm uh, used through MIBA, uh, I'm lobbying to try to persuade um, through the Department for Transport, trying to persuade them to, to uh, um, not make this the case. Um, it's not a disaster if, if uh, UK nationals have to get a Schengen visa, but it's an, a load of hassle that, uh, that they don't need. Um, but um, um, I'm, I'm hopeful that, that that will be the case, but I, I don't know yet, but I'll, I'll keep you updated on, on, okay. on the progress on that. Well, I think uh, after the 31st of December, we're probably going to have to have a couple of webinars co covering a co couple of issues related to Brexit, and we can cover that topic uh, within the early course of next year. Because, you know, a lot of, um, oh, we can just hear a bit of sound, but yeah, a lot of obviously a lot of crew come over and they spend a lot of time on land while they're looking for jobs or in between jobs. And I think it's really important that we, you know, can get some clarity on exactly what UK citizens will be subject to in terms of visa or sort of um, travel regulations after Brexit. So uh, yeah, if COVID wasn't enough, we've got Brexit coming up. So <laughs> brilliant. Okay, so I will move quickly on to uh, Kim Woody from KDW Training. Um, Kim, could you just give us a bit of an update on, on the training that you have on at the moment and what you have planned for the winter? Sure. Thanks, Stacey. Um, at the moment, we've it's it's been a bit quiet. Um, I must be honest on the on the interior front. It seems a lot of budgets have been cut, and the interior training has um, has been the one that's been a wee bit cut. But at the moment, um, we've got a couple of online courses running, which is great. <laughs> Um, the admin and HR um, is one that we're doing at the moment, um, as well as um, the IAMI guest um, cigar course. And we're looking hopefully to uh, to be bringing in possibly the um, advanced management online as well. So they're all quite um, theory based courses that don't really require too much practical assessment. Um, and it's been working really well on Zoom, um, you know, based breaking them down over, um, you know, four, four or five sessions. Um, and it's all one-on-one, -on -one, which has worked really well. Um, students have really benefited from, from having that kind of one-on-one -on -one contact. A lot of work involved with it. So it's not just a walk in the park, um, but we've had really good feedback from it so far. Um, we've also been doing um, a little bit of um, onboard training as well, but obviously all with COVID restrictions in place, um, COVID tests done before, you know, going onto the boats, um, training done um, with masks on, et cetera. Um, and we've also been um, doing one or two shoreside courses with um, a training center here in, in Antibes. Um, but again, um, low, smaller course numbers, just to, to make sure that we're keeping the, the social distancing thing going, um, masks worn, um, you know, just all the, the usual restrictions that uh, that have been in place. But, you know, COVID, I think, has, has affected uh, has affected everybody. Um, but we are still really excited for for the response to the online training, um, especially since a lot of a lot of, um, you know, Aussies and South Africans aren't able to go home for for Christmas. Um, they're going to be stuck in the shipyard. They're going to be looking for things to do. So uh, we're, we're really got we're really feeling very optimistic about the uh, the online training. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thanks, Kim. And and if anyone wants to get in touch with you about a, one of your upcoming courses, uh, could you just pop your 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 best contact details, whether it's yours directly or for the your your training school in general, any um, contact details you prefer uh, in the chat? That would be really helpful. Sure, no problem. Perfect. Um, so uh, on the sort of si similar interior theme, uh, we've got Luxury Hospitality up next. So Georgie Amani from Luxury Hospitality, I know you guys do uh, a range of uh, training. So could you just tell us a little bit more about the training that you have um, obviously going on at the moment and uh, all the, the training that you've got planned for the winter and obviously if, if COVID has affected you? Yeah, well, I think uh, COVID is a, yeah. hello everybody, by the way, yeah, I'm Georgie and I'm the Academy Manager for uh, Luxury Hospitality and absolutely COVID has affected us. It's become the biggest accelerator of transformation in our lifetime. It's the way we shop, the way we socialize, the way we exercise and the way we learn is 
been changed forever and there's no going back. I think this change is here to stay. So uh, uh, Luxury Hospitality have really embraced um, what we can do to support crew um, and how we can actually keep our trainers in work as well, because that's important as well. So I'm going to share my screen if that's all right, because yes, sometimes right. visuals um, are far more effective than the seem to me waffle on. So, <laughs> um, so what have we been doing? I'll just share it now. This is a direct link to um, our online courses for luxury hospitality. And um, I'll start with the insight and the talent dynamics that you can see here. These are two courses that work really well hand in hand with each other. And it's to designed to take you um, on a journey with your people skills to a whole new level. And it's about going, gaining greater confidence um, in yourself with your communication with others and an understanding of others. And it's a really, really interactive course with our two trainers, uh, Julia and Lynn. Um, so they are very much in charge of the on-site insight online and the talent dynamics. And then we also have the leadership. So obviously you can click on all of these and find more information. But we've got the leadership on demand as well. And this is a really fabulous course to polish and develop your lead skills, leadership skills. And it's, a, it's five programs taking you through personal leadership and developing your skills to emerge as a leader. And the content includes videos, uh, animations, quizzes, and downloadable um, guidebooks as well. And that's run by our leadership uh, manager, who is Martin. And then we've got this, um, the, uh, the sexy one, as I call it, which is the art of bartending. And this is a super, super program of 12 hours of training with our resident mixolo mixologist, so Rob Rademacher. And it's a huge spectacular of videos and one-to-one -one time with Rob himself. It is truly awesome. And um, if you want to go on the Luxury Hospitality YouTube channel, you can have a little taste of some of the videos that Rob's been posted on there. And that's absolutely fantastic. And all of these courses do go to some way of um, the guest program, not all of them, but uh, it does do some of the guest modules as well. They do overlap. And then finally, which is probably very, very pertinent at the moment, um, if you go on to Empower My Team, um, there is the online training for the manager in charge for the luxury yacht program. And this is the accredited training for the Maritime Food Authority. And it's incredibly embracing of what's going on at the moment. It gives um, the full program for the manager in charge, which is accredited by high field qualification and is run through the Maritime Food Authority. And as a training provider, we can give you all of the trainings and all the details are here on the website, which cover um, food safety management, auditing for the yacht, HACCP, and really, really important, importantly, for the uh, yacht's public health, sanitation, and outbreak management planning. And this has been really, really popular as crew are feeling quite out in the dark about how to cope with outbreak management planning and how to actually um, cope with the changes with COVID and actually plan for the future for any other viruses that uh, may come and affect um, the, the world. And it's actually keeping in line with what's happening in the cruise line industry as well, but it's all really, really tailored to the, uh, the super yachts. So I'm gonna stop sharing, but all the details obviously are on the website and I'll share the website with everybody. Um, and how to get in touch. And we are really embracing this change. A um, bit scary for some of our trainers, but we've got this uh, new e-learning platform that we're developing. So most of our courses for the interior will be um, online, but we do have trainers in the UK, France and Holland. So with travel corridors, we can potentially get you to the arts and we, we have our own uh, COVID policies in place, but we always abide by uh, local government rules and also the rules for um, the yacht themselves. So uh, yeah, thanks very much for the time. And if I can be of any further help, just get in touch. Brilliant, thank you so much, Georgie. I think that, yeah, that was really useful. And it's really nice to hear that you've got that, that, that management uh, tailored course that obviously helps crew in the event that an outbreak does happen on board. I have seen a couple of questions on the Facebook groups as well by a few crews saying, 
has anybody had to deal with a COVID outbreak on board? What, yeah. what would you do? So okay. I think, you know, if I imagine maybe if you're on a smaller yacht, uh, you know, maybe you could get by without any formal training. Um, even so, it's it's probably not very professional, but especially, you know, as, as the boat gets bigger and bigger, more guests, uh, the need for actually having a professional process and the training to know what to do is really important. Yeah, and COVID's, COVID's not going to go away anytime soon. Yeah. And as I would like it to, it's not. So I think getting that training sounds like a really good idea. Yeah, exactly. And it's the due diligence and it's for the peace of mind for crew and for all guests that are coming on board as well. So any more information on that, you can either go to the Luxury Hospitality site or you can go to the Maritime Food Authority website as well. So all the information is there. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Okay. And then uh, just finally on to our last panels for today, uh, Joey Mead from IAMI Guest. So Joey, obviously I know you you guys are on a training provider, but you uh, obviously accredit a, a lot of the interior training. So could you just tell us a little bit about um, what's going on, uh, you know, with you guys at the moment, any updates or news, uh, anything for the, the winter season that you'd like to mention? Thank you very much. Thank you for having me, Stacey. And, um... Uh, it's nice to be here and having the opportunity to, uh, to give you a quick update on some of the activities that the guest program has been working on. Um, uh, I think I'd like to just do a little screen share as well, if I'm able to do okay. that, um, yes. just to show you uh, the website and some of the courses that we're running. Um, but basically, we've been um, uh, working with, uh, how am I doing this? Or maybe I'm not going to be, just able, to be able to share your screen from the button right at the bottom. Yeah, that, that would be me trying and not being very savvy <laughs> about this. Uh, yeah, I think I think we might need to, to get that because I'm probably going to mess up my time scale. Don't worry, it was just I'm going to show you the website. I'll put the details up on the um, in the chat afterwards. But we've been working hard on making sure that the training providers are supported and the trainers are supported by putting in place the blended learning um, directive so that the guest program, most of the modules can be run um, with either a combination of online and then a workshop arranged at a later date as and when people can travel. And some of the training can be run just online completely, as Kim has already said, with some of the cigar stuff and the admin and HR, for example. Um, so that, that's beginning to grow. A lot more of our training providers are starting to use that platform. Obviously, it's the need. Um, and uh, certainly, they seem to be quite busy with the number of students that have been coming through. We've been seeing quite a large number of certificates coming in over the last six months. Um, so that actually has been quite um, inspiring, I think, to think that the crew are actually wanting to do some uh, CPD in their own time and perhaps while well, they've got a bit of time on their hands if they're not been cruising this year. Um, so that's been a good thing and we will obviously be continuing to do that and offer that and I think as each training provider is growing and learning some of the different ways of, um, of operating technology unlike clearly myself um, I think it's, um, it's great to see some of these platforms uh, growing a bit more to support the crew with uh, more interactive learning uh, um, etc so that's been quite an exciting road from this sad um, and slightly fearful time with COVID. Uh, we've also been working on the PERSA program and that's so exciting. We've got three training schools now approved to run that. Um, and uh, we've got a large number of students who signed up. That's all online. Uh, all the schools run slightly differently. Some of them are running with group, uh, group webinars and Zoom chats and some of them are doing just face-to-face one-to-ones. Um, but it seems to be just going really well and we're really excited. Um, interestingly, we've had quite a few captains and chief officers sign up to that course, um, and we're now looking at developing a school bolt onto it, which we're currently in the middle of doing, which would be the executive officer course, because basically we identified 85% of the training within that program um, is, uh, that's the person course, uh, Jay, um, uh, the 85% of the training that's in there is actually very relevant to a lot of the work that the chief officers do um, on vessels that, are, that don't have a, a purser available. So it's been quite interesting to see how uh, how people have reacted to that. Um, and uh, so we're, we're, we're pushing that forward now to see if we can um, put something in place to accommodate um, uh, the onboard logistics for that. 
and perhaps even as a bridge to uh, working on board and perhaps looking at yacht management as well, because a lot of the content is very relevant to that. So that's exciting. We're working on that. Um, obviously, for the crew that are listening that are on board, particularly the interior crew, you know, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, what you're doing now? What do you need from us? How can we support you more? Um, you know, what, are, what is it that you need and how can we help? Um, we've got uh, various things in place with regards to onboard training record book. And it could be that some of the crew on board could be working through their training record book, which is part of the program that leads to the advanced training, um, which is issue of a certificate of competence at the end of that. So that is part of the underpinning onboard mentoring on board. So that is something we could help with and advise with. Um, and obviously the certificates of competence, we've had a, an increase of students uh, applying for their COCs and that hopefully will be something we'll be issuing more certificates over the next few months for that as well as students complete some of the, the modules. So that's being exciting. Um, we've had lots of meetings with our training providers over the last six months, which has been really heartwarming. Uh, we're a great team and I think everybody's been working hard together to try and sort of build the programme and and make sure we're there to support the crew. So that's our objective. And um, yeah, if anybody wants to make some suggestions or give us an idea of what you would like or need, then we're here. Thank you. Brilliant. Uh, thank you so much, Joe. Yep, that was really useful. Um, I, I've seen, obviously, as we were, we were going through the webinar, a couple of questions have come into the chat and I can see that most of them have been answered. But if there are any questions that anyone has that haven't been answered, feel free to pop them in the chat right now uh, so we can go through them. Before I go through the questions, I just wanted to let everyone know today that uh, for everyone who's joined in our webinar, we're offering uh, all crew a 20% membership discount to the PYA. So if you're looking to get your C service verified at the moment, or you need assistance with your NOE or COC or revalidation applications with MTA, uh, that's all part of our membership, as well as legal defense insurance, and we have a specialized one-to-one -one member assistance service. So if you've got specific questions about your contract or any employment questions, that's all part of our membership. So the code to get the discount is WEB20. So I'll just pop that in the chat. So WEB, W-E-B, 20. Uh, and you can sign up directly by the website and get that discount. Um, so yeah, I, I can't see any other questions that have popped into the chat. But one question I'm just going to repeat, just because when uh, the crew who are not watching uh, the live webinar in the recording, they won't see the chat. So it was just a qu question from Tom Listens. And it just said, hi all, with the current measures where COVID restrictions are making it harder for crew to travel, what do we do for crew when certificates come to expire and crew are not able to leave home or work to attend MCA approved courses? It's, and, and he said they're especially thinking about STCW tickets. And I know, Anna, you responded uh, to this question. Would you mind just responding um, sort of in the, in, the, in the webinar video, just so that those who are watching the recording can hear your answer? Yeah, hi. So um, at the very beginning of the UK lockdown, um, the MCA basically said that they didn't want any seafarer to suffer at all and they were just putting a blanket extension to anything that's got a, uh, an expiry date be it um, uh, an NOE or a pass certificate or your COC um, that they're just giving everything a six-month extension and that's include, that includes um, things that we have to get revalidated as well that, that everyone just couldn't achieve uh, during lockdown um so you don't have to ask any kind of permission or anything it's just automatically got an extra six months added to to the end of it there's no documentation saying that because the mca have been so busy putting everything in place um but it has been um said in, in quite a few public forums by the mca so it, it is a fact that it's definitely happened brilliant thanks uh, thanks anna and then uh, just one other question that i can see joe you've answered as well was you were mentioning a new program uh, that three schools had been approved for and uh, you have answered that in the chat and you said it's the new guest purser program so just to let everyone know who, who had that same question who's watching the recording uh, that's Joey's answer <laughs> brilliant okay I can't see any other questions that have come through so just to all the panelists if there's do any of you have any final words or final thoughts that you want to get in before before we we say goodbye 
No, everyone, everyone said their piece. Brilliant. Okay. Well, thank you so much to everyone who's joined, who joined us, obviously to the crew who've taken the time. Um, obviously, if anybody's watching this as a recorded webinar, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. And yeah, obviously, thank you to the panelists who've, who've taken an hour actual day today to join us. I think it's really useful to get an update uh, on what's happening, especially where so much is changing. So yeah, it's really great to have that update. So thank you so much. Brilliant. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great uh, rest of your evening. And uh, I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll, we'll hold another webinar next year. And so we'll hear from you all soon uh, where we can get another update, hopefully uh, with no restrictions. And uh, we're all back to uh, a lot of uh, in-person training. Thank you, Stacey. Thanks so much. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Cheers. Bye. Bye.